Curious to know how the water inlet system on your Whirlpool washer works? This is Eric Partsock and today I'll explain how all these pieces work together and help you troubleshoot if your washer is filling with water when it's not supposed to, not filling at all, only filling with hot, or only filling with cold water. These instructions may also apply to some other Whirlpool Corporation brands including Maytag, Amana, and more. There are four components to the washer's water inlet system. The hoses on the back of the washer deliver hot and cold water from the house to the washer. The pressure hose sends a signal to the pressure sensor on the main control board to detect the amount of water in the tub. The main control board regulates the powers sent to the water valve. And the water valve fills the washer with the proper amount of water for the cycle. We won't cover the full repair instructions for each of the parts in today's video, but we will have those listed down in the description below. The first issue you might run into is the washer filling with water when it's not supposed to. To test this, we'll need to disconnect power to the washer and let it sit. If the washer fills with water, this means that the water inlet valve is leaking or stuck open and needs to be replaced. If your washer is not filling when it's supposed to, the next thing to check would be the flow of water from the house to the washer. To test this, turn off the water at the house and disconnect the hoses from the back of the washer. Next, stick the ends of the hoses into a bucket and turn the water back on. If the flow of water is inadequate, inspect the house's plumbing and washer's hoses for a failure or restrictions. With the hoses removed from the washer, the next thing to check would be the filters on the water inlet valve. These plastic filters help prevent debris from entering the valve. If these filters are clogged, you will need to replace the entire water inlet valve as these filters are non-removable and not sold separately. Next, we will check the water inlet valves to make sure they are functioning correctly. The washer's inlet valves are located here under the console assembly. These valves control the flow of the water into the appliance. The valves can open and close to allow the passage of water during the appropriate stages of the washer's cycle. A bad valve can prevent water from flowing into the washer. To test the valves, you'll need a multimeter. For this test, make sure to disconnect power to the washer. Then, remove both electrical connectors from the water inlet valve. Next, turn the multimeter to the ohms setting. Then, touch one of the probes to each of the terminals on one side of the water valve. Whirlpool says that you should get anywhere from 890 to 1090 ohms, but we have found the output to be around 1300 ohms. Next, check the other side of the valve. The valve should be around the same for each set of terminals. Note this test does not guarantee the water valve is working properly, as one of the internal seals or components could still have failed. Now, we'll inspect the wiring from the water valve to the main control board. Do a visual inspection to make sure that the wires are not damaged or burnt. If they are, the water inlet valve will need to be replaced as the wires are not sold separately. With both of the connectors disconnected, trace the wires back to the main control board. Using a multimeter turn to the continuity setting, test each wire. Each wire should have continuity, and if a wire fails the continuity test, the entire water valve will need to be replaced. Next, we'll do a live voltage test on the water control valve to make sure that the main control board is delivering power correctly. Since we will be working with live electricity, use extreme caution when testing. With the washer on plug, make sure that the console assembly is plugged back into the main control board. But since we'll need access to the water inlet valve, leave the console assembly detached from the washer. Find the small metal tabs that are exposed between the protector and the yellow solenoid on the valve. This is where we will place the tips of our multimeter to test the voltage being sent to the valve. Then, change the multimeter to the AC voltage setting. It's usually indicated by a V with a wavy line above it. Next, reconnect power to the washer and run a normal cycle with the warm water on. It is important to use the warm water setting to make sure that the control board triggers both sides of the water valve to open. With the cycle started, touch one of the probes of the multimeter to each of the metal tabs on either the hot or cold side of the valve. When the control board sends electricity to the valve, the voltage reading will climb. It won't be immediately after starting the cycle. Our washer engaged the cold side of the water valve around 47 seconds into the cycle and the hot side of the valve around a minute 15 into the cycle. The valves may not get power or open at the same time so you'll have to alternate between testing each side more than once to ensure the valve is receiving power and opening. 
you should be able to hear the valves open and the solenoids inside the valves buzzing when the power is being sent to them. If the power is being sent but you cannot hear the valves opening, it is most likely broken. If either side of the washer inlet is failing to get power, that means that the control board may have gone bad and may need to be replaced. If you're getting power to the water inlet valve and still having issues with the washer not filling properly, the water inlet valve has most likely gone bad and may need to be replaced. If you need to purchase any of these parts, you can check out our website, PartsDoctor.com, where we sell parts for all major appliance brands. Here at Parts Doctor, we only sell authentic, genuine parts sourced directly from the manufacturer. When searching our website, make sure to use the model number from your appliance to make sure you are getting the correct part. And that's it for today's video, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and comment down below, and for more videos like this, please consider subscribing.